Hello everyone, today's video is how to open up this what would be Toshiba for a Dynabook Satellite Pro C50-H-11B otherwise known as PN part number PYS33E-00905LEN So I need to get into this machine because the uh, battery has failed and there's probably many other things that you can do once you're in the machine um, such as replace the storage, possibly upgrade the RAM, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So you need to start by taking out every single screw that you can see on the underside these screws are frustratingly small so actually this screwdriver I've got here is too big for those I've had to get out my small jeweler's screwdriver which has got a very thin tipped uh, crosshead end I'm afraid I don't know what the size is but if you look up on uh, the internet jewelers or watch screwdrivers they tend to have these metal rotating bits at the top and um, and a grippy bit there and that's generally what they look like so uh, it's always worthwhile having a set of those or possibly the iFixit kit which has all sorts of stuff and has all the Torx uh, bits and the, the Pentalope bits for Apple computers as well none of these screws seem to be done up particularly tight I will say that um, I don't think this machine's been opened in the past it's uh, it's more likely that it's just work wasn't screwed in properly when they first made it. There is some Loctite on the screws, or similar, but it's uh, it's obviously not really worked very well. One thing to note is the screws at the front are shorter than the ones I'm taking out here. Whenever I take a machine apart, I put the screws in a little map of where they came from, um, just very roughly on the desk when I take them out so that I do know where they go back when I put the machine back together so that's worthwhile doing for this because as I say the the screws that are closest to the front of the machine um, where the touchpad would be uh, are, are shorter than the ones I've undone since um, and if you put the wrong screws back in the wrong place and especially if you put a longer screw back into a place where it's expecting a short screw uh, you're quite likely to damage the plastic palm rest and end up with the screw coming through um, and making a, a bulge in the plastic that screw didn't want to come out so I had to uh, give it a bit of encouragement with a, a blade underneath it That's all the screws undone, and it should be a case of going around all the edges of this machine and unclipping the underside panel. My only worry is that there's possibly a few hidden screws underneath uh, these feet, but we will, uh, or I'll discover that as I go around and. Um, let you know Okay, doesn't look like there are any additional hidden screws, not like HP, who are very good at hiding screws in places where you're not expecting it.
So I'm now just going around with my fingers, trying to gently unclip the rest of this case. It's actually incredibly well clipped on. There we go, eventually got there, just um, a lot of patience and it's not like holding on to one bit of it and then trying to wrench the whole thing up, it's just going around the, th the uh, edge of it with your hands and feeling and, and unclipping and uh, you will get there. What we have within this machine, we've got the BIOS batteries here speaker here and a speaker there. You have the main battery which is surprisingly warm considering it wasn't charging or didn't want to charge. It's not not heat that's come from the motherboard I don't think. Anyway uh, you've got the storage here so that's the SSD. Interestingly removable RAM which is nice for a machine that's like this. Normally they're soldered onto the board uh, this has got 8 gigs of RAM in it, so you can upgrade that if you needed to or wanted to. Oh, yes, kitty kitty. Uh, the CPU, which looks like it is soldered onto the board, so you wouldn't be able to replace that if you wanted to. You have the heatsink here, which has already got, as Toshiba's traditionally did, get a lot of fluff into the fan. I can see some down there as well. And get rid of a couple of bits of fluff and that. The fan there. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a wireless card that is that small. I think that wireless card is even soldered onto the board. I've never seen that before. So much so that I will be taking a photo of it. What else do we have? We've got probably the keyboard connector there. No, keyboard connector there. Vid no, the video connector is there, so that's the off to the screen. BIOS battery speakers are that one there. That is the main battery. So yeah, keyboard, touchpad, potentially if you had a backlit keyboard that would be the power to the backlit keyboard. So this unusual multi-pin connector there, I'm curious what that is, but I do need to remove the battery anyway, so uh, I'm sure I'll find out where that, ah, there we go, I can see it here, it goes along here, along and to here, and it is the uh, board which has got the LAN, so the Ethernet on it. Uh, one of the USB-C ports, no, sorry, USB 3 ports, it's got an audio port and the card reader. So that's what that one there is. Right, battery removal time. Oh, it also uses the frustratingly small screws. Or uh, frustratingly small headed screws. Looks like four screws hold this battery in. And now I've got the battery loose. I should be able to lift it up and unplug. Well, uh, see if I can detach these leads over here, which are hooked through the battery because they're just going to get snagged otherwise. Okay, that's the cables through that channel undone and then 
this connector here. Just gently push on either side of it. Might actually be better to use my fingers for this. And that is the, the battery is now removed. The model number of this, if it's helpful to you, is uh, 4588105-2S and an MSN number, whatever that is, a 4007169.8. It's 7.6 volts and uh, 600, sorry, 6,000 milliamp hours, um, which is 45.6 watt hours. And um, yeah, that's about it. So I need to buy another one of these and fit it and see if it solves my problem of the machine not charging and not lasting very long on battery. If this video has been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thanks very much.